What's up guys and welcome back to TV Time with Jay. I am of course your host Jay and this is my review of episode 2 of the new HBO uh, series um, co-created by Jordan Peele uh, in association with J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Company, Lovecraft Country. Oh my goodness, I have a lot to say about this one. Now, I am a day late with this, and I do apologize. Uh, I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday. Um, honestly, I had to completely like rebrand the channel since I've decided to make the full move from Vlare back to YouTube. Uh, so that took some time, uh, but now you know we should be getting back into a more consistent upload schedule in terms of reviews. And Lovecraft Country is definitely on that list because, boy is this show impressive uh, but before I get full-on started with the review I'm going to give my usual warning you know if you have not seen the first two episodes of Lovecraft Country Sundown and White is on the Moon do yourself a favor either you know go on your own HBO Max or HBO Now accounts or borrow somebody's password do whatever you got to do I'm not here to judge you but watch this show it is absolutely amazing. If you consider yourself a horror fan in any way, shape, or form, then you owe it to yourself to watch this show because it is a master class in horror just from these two episodes alone. Oh my god. So, uh, what is Lovecraft Country? Well, as the name implies, it borrows a lot of influence from, of course, acclaimed horror writer and noted racist, H.P. Lovecraft. And this takes place in the, what I believe to be, um, early 50s or, no, mid 50s to early 60s. I want to say it's like mid 50s because our main character Atticus, a.k.a. Tick, he served in the Korean War, which was in the 50s. So I would say it's around that time, possibly early 60s. Um, and basically, Tick gets a letter from his estranged father saying that he needs him to come to this place called Lovecraft Country. And he needs to be there because he needs to claim a birthright that he discovered when looking into Tick's mother's past and her ancestors. And so, basically, Tick, his Uncle George, and his friend Letitia, Letty, they all go on a journey to this place. And also, his Uncle George serves as a guide, or a guidesman. Basically, he creates this guide to mark places, you know, across the country and whatnot, uh, so that black people know which places are safe which establishments will actually accept their service and kind of what are the rules uh, when traversing certain territories and you know during those times especially uh, it was a dangerous but definitely necessary and you know appreciated job because just things were not safe for people of color in those days um, Hell, I mean, even now, things get pretty dicey. So, like, just imagine even back then, before the Civil Rights Movement even, like, kicked off into full swing. Like, it's got to have been nuts. But right from the jump with this show, the visuals were absolutely breathtaking. And the cinematography as well. But the biggest strength this show has, and this... Uh, definitely has a lot to do with Jordan Peele and I, I know he's only an executive producer but his fingerprints are all on this show just the use of silence and suspense because that is what a lot of people kind of get wrong about horror everybody thinks horror is just about scares it's about you know that fright moment which is why jump scares have become so popular but the thing that makes good horror great is a sense of suspense and unease 
It's not just scary. It's a connection to reality. It makes you actually like feel like you're in the situation and you're just like, what's going to happen? That whole fear of the unknown, the suspense, and that is what Lovecraft Country does really well. It crafts this just thick sense of tension and in the first episode most of the suspense and tension comes from racial tension as they're traveling through to get to Lovecraft Country and then when sundown comes that's when the real Lovecraftian horror rears its head and when it does oh my god this show just explodes it is insane how well paced it is the action is amazing the acting from all parties involved is absolutely phenomenal Jerry Smollett as freaking Letty Lewis is just a fucking delight uh, like no other way to put it uh, same with the actor who plays Tick and the actor who plays Uncle George as well absolute powerhouses when it comes to acting and this second episode it took it to a whole nother level i was you know thoroughly blown away by the pilot episode I, you know i can confidently say that that was the best pilot episode of a new show i have seen all year and that second episode somehow managed to top it because they did something that i was expecting them to build all the way up to the finale to do they did it all in one episode and it didn't feel rushed it felt very natural so we discover more and more about uh, you know this mysterious lodge that they end up finding themselves at at the end of episode one and uh, you know we obviously see that something is off around here uh, they explore the village and you know you get this like get out type of vibe people are just looking around the sheriff is making all these like you know racist and you know passive aggressive jabs like out you know openly comparing black people to animals it's just oh my god and then when we discover basically that the founder of said lodge uh was an occultist and he attempted a ritual and it ended up like setting the whole lodge on fire and that is actually how uh, Tick's great 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 whatever grandmother escaped because of course she was a slave working for this man and she was pregnant by her master and eventually down the line it led to Tick and so they need Tick because he has the blood of the original founder who was able to wield the magic that this guy, um, you know, I forget the last name, is trying to use in order to basically open a portal to the Garden of Eden and enter a time where man was immortal, man was king, man was as close to God as they could get. And so, basically, you know, he uses the mag the you know mysterious magic of this house, which reminds me a lot of the House of Mystery for anyone who's a DC Comics fan. And basically, the house shows them not a some of the um, you know it shows Uncle George his lost love. It shows Letty Tick, and it shows Tick um, a vision or a like illusion of his you know love interest that he made um, at during the war who he ended up falling in love with and it seems like they're heavily implying that he had to kill her and you know that guilt is weighing on his conscience uh, we do see him call her on the phone and she answers but I don't know if that was real or if that was just in his head and that's kind of the thing that I like about this uh, with the atmosphere that they set up with this show you can never take anything at face value. You constantly have to question everything, which in turn just builds up your anxiety. And so it's just like, what the fuck is going to happen? And they end up actually getting all the way to the ceremony. And Tick, he reaches out 
and he like kind of tries to utilize that power before he gets overtaken you know as this vessel and he blasts people with magic and going straight up Saddam and Gomorrah style turning everyone into stone and collapsing the entire lodge thankfully you know his dad who they managed to rescue um, Letty and Uncle George make it out of the lodge but unfortunately because Uncle George wasn't healed um, before uh, before then because he made a deal with the you know owner of the lodge that you know Uncle George would only be healed if Tick willingly participated in the ceremony and so Uncle George was still you know injured from the gunshot wound and so when they you know rushed him out of there to you know get out of the collapsing lodge Uncle George didn't make it so R.I.P. Uncle George things are gonna get insane because obviously there are gonna be massive repercussions now we know that Tick has some kind of supernatural ability and affinity to him what is gonna happen here uh, you know are they going to bring this bad mojo with them when they return home uh, you know what's gonna happen with Uncle George Uncle George is listed to be in all the episodes of this season according to IMDB so is Uncle George's ghost gonna be around because you know we do know that there's a whole supernatural element to the show uh, this show just constantly has me guessing and to be honest I don't think I can theory craft with this show because I'll be real with y'all I have no idea what is gonna happen this show constantly is throwing lefts at me when I think it's gonna throw rights so I'm not even gonna try to predict anything I'm just gonna enjoy the ride and you guys are just gonna basically hear my thoughts and reactions to the episodes as they go along and you know hopefully I'll get to hear yours too also anyone who is more familiar with Lovecraft and the Lovecraft universe please uh, fill me in if you watch this show and you catch more references and you know you want to explain what a certain monster is or something like that definitely tell me in the comments below I'd really appreciate that also don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it and if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can turn on all notifications and get notified every time I upload a new video also in the outro card I will leave linked uh, my most recent upload which was my Winona Earp season 4 episode 5 review for anyone who is an erper and wants to check out that and I will leave linked a video YouTube's mysterious algorithm that you might like also don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Twitch at Mr. Jace Caldea on Twitter is where like you know I end up you know liking and retweeting art and posting a bunch of video links and you know it's where I kind of update people about my video schedule and all that stuff and I live tweet shows sometimes so definitely follow me on there it's a blast and also on Twitch uh, basically you know, I chat with people and while I play video games, mostly Fate Grand Order. But, uh, you know, if you want to do that and just chill and talk with me, uh, follow me on Twitch as well. Links are in the description down below. But that's pretty much it for me. This has been TV Time with Jay. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. <laughs>